Yeah, and you've mentioned, uh, and I want to, I want to pick up on this. You've mentioned, uh, I think, about six, or maybe seven or eight policies for redirecting technology, as you say, right? Uh, because you obviously have a very clear view that uh, technology is not deterministic, and that we must make the choices uh, that are necessary to redirect technology towards this idea of progress that we were talking about, the one that's broader than technological progress. I think we've covered maybe a few of them. Are there any others you want to talk about? I know we've talked about yeah. the big tech piece, breaking up big tech piece. We've talked a little bit about maybe even tax reforms, etc. Any others you want to highlight? Well, let me say some something briefly. You know, my concern is that we are on a path that is failing to take advantage of all of the opportunities that new technologies bring. And that's partly because we are using these technologies in a anti-human direction. We are prioritizing automation rather than making workers more productive. We are using them for surveillance and data collection in order to control and monitor and sometimes manipulate humans. We are using them for non-democratic uh, rather than pro-democratic ways. And part of the promise of AI and digital technologies in general is that I think there is a very fruitful pro-human direction. You know, generative AI, for example, can be a tool for making workers more autonomous, more responsible, more creative, better informed, better decision makers. We, they can make democracy work better. You know, people who thought that wikis and social media were going to be pro-democratic tools, of course, they were naive and they turned out to be wrong, but they weren't completely delusional. That promise was there in 2000 and it is even more so today, but it's not the this direction that we have chosen. So the first step, Simon and I argue, is to recognize that a pro-human, human complementary direction is feasible and desirable and change the narrative about what technology should do and who controls technology. We all collectively should control technology. It's not Elon Musk, it's not Sam Altman, it's not Mark Zuckerberg, it's not a battle of titans. It is society's responsibility and society's right to have a say on these matters. That's 50% of the battle. Once we do that, we have really ha achieved a much more clear eye framework for the discussion. That's not enough by itself, then we need to build better institutions, countervailing powers. I hope we don't repeat what we saw four months ago, three months ago, when you know finally the US Senate woke up that there is something called generative AI. <laughs> they decided to have a hearing and they invited the uh, top executives of the top five tech giants. You know, wh what about workers? Hundreds of millions of workers in the United States and billions of workers around the world are going to be infected. What about their voice and their views? No, no, they don't count. Well, so we change that by having countervailing powers and better institutions for participatory decision making. And then we should think about specific policies. And we mentioned seven of them in the book, for example, leveling the playing field in terms of taxes. The US tax code, the, the British tax code, for example, uh, most other countries, they subsidize capital and they tax labor. That creates an artificial tendency for, for automation. automating work. That's right. Uh, we have created this ecosystem around digital individualized ads that are highly manipulative and they doesn't allow alternative business models that are much more participatory to emerge. So we propose digital ad taxes to deal with that. We also think that data is going to become more and more important. And right now the data of hundreds of millions of people and especially creative workers, such as artists, journalists, writers, are being expropriated by tech companies. So we need to have data rights, probably collective data rights of some sort. So there are a number of other policy ideas related to this, but we don't claim that any of this is a magic bullet. And in some of sure. them, perhaps we are wrong and others will come up with better ideas. But we want to change the conversation and we want to take the first step for understanding the need for building new institutions around these topics. No, absolutely. And I think that's, that's a, I mean, as urgent a, a conversation that needs to be started publicly and globally, I think as any other, because as you rightly say, the stakes are high, the future of our societies and the structure of our societies and our economies globally is, is in many ways at stake.